for most people, doing a PhD is a terrible idea. Now, I'm not saying that nobody should do a PhD. For some people, it is absolutely the right path. And personally, I strongly believe in the value of academic research. But a lot of PhD students do it for the wrong reasons without really understanding what they're getting into, and they suffer as a result. So why is it such a bad idea for most people? Well, first of all, it's badly paid if you get paid at all, or extremely expensive if you have to fund yourself. And there's also the potential lost earnings if you choose to do a PhD instead of entering the workforce. Now, you might think that that's worth it because perhaps having a PhD could open up the path to your dream job in academia, but there are far more students graduating with PhDs than the number of academic jobs available. And many PhD graduates struggle to find a permanent position, instead wandering from one temporary postdoc to another, often having to move cities or countries in the process. And the stress from this lack of job security is only multiplied if you're one half of an academic couple. Now, maybe you don't want to be a career academic, but you think that getting a PhD will increase your value to an employer later. But unless you're seeking research jobs or throughout your PhD, you can build up a set of other skills that are of potential value to an employer, you could find yourself in the awkward position of being both underqualified, but underexperienced for many jobs once you graduate. This is, of course, assuming that you do graduate. So in an undergraduate degree, the path to success is quite clear. If you show up to your lectures, if you learn what you're told to learn, and you prepare well for your exams, you'll probably do quite well. In a PhD though, there isn't such a clear path to success, and some PhD programs have really no structure or guidance at all. And many students either give up or worse, spend years or sometimes decades wrestling with an unfinished thesis. Now, if you're lucky, you'll be able to find a great supervisor and other colleagues to guide you and support you. But if you're unlucky, you'll get a supervisor who ignores you and leaves you to figure everything out yourself. And if you're very unlucky, you can find yourself subject to outright exploitation with some supervisors keeping students around for years and actively holding them back because they basically want cheap labor. Now, of course, not all supervisors are exploitative, but very few are given any kind of adequate training and most are under immense pressure themselves with teaching and administration, their own research and supervision, all competing for their time and attention. And even when a supervisor has the best of intentions, it's easy for PhD students to end up drifting along, wondering what to do. Now, perhaps none of this puts you off and you want to do a PhD for the sake of completing your education or to find some kind of validation. And this can be a very powerful motivation, but it's not necessarily a good one. If you think that doing a PhD is going to satisfy a sense of incompleteness in your life, it won't. And thinking this way pins far too much of your self-esteem on external validation and puts far too much pressure on the work. So if you're doing a PhD to prove that you're good enough, then when you face a problem, which is inevitable, it's not just a practical issue, but it can be a threat to your very sense of self-worth. And this can lead to a cycle of anxiety that's very difficult to escape as the need for validation or the fear of making a mistake or looking stupid stops you from taking risks or asking questions, which in turn makes it harder to solve the problems that arise, which only adds to the sense of personal failure and increases the stress, which makes it harder to think and so on. And this is one of the reasons why some people never finish because in some ways it's easier to be a struggling student than to submit something and risk criticism. But even if you get through to the end, getting the PhD certificate 
won't necessarily solve that initial need for validation. You'll get the congratulations, you'll get the short-term high that comes from achieving a difficult goal, but then what? The high doesn't last for very long. And if you started with this need for validation, it'll still be there when you finish. So a PhD, it's a means, not an end. And if you can figure out what you're trying to gain through a PhD, then you might see other easier ways to achieve the same thing. For example, if you want to work on something that's important to you, it might be better to actually work in that field and have a more direct effect than to spend years reading and writing about it for an academic audience. If you want to just continue your education because you're interested in the subject, you can do so without the constraints of specialization or the demands of PhD research just by reading or learning in other ways. And if you're thinking about a PhD because you need the validation, it's probably better to try meditation and therapy to deal with the underlying issues more directly. So too many students pursue a PhD drawn by the perceived prestige and end up suffering for no good reason. Unlike a job, which you can quit if you don't like, there's a sense that quitting a PhD is a personal failure, even if the PhD isn't giving you what you want in return. And this creates a psychological trap where students are miserable, but unable to finish and unable to walk away. And yet, a PhD can be a wonderful experience. Academia can give you the opportunity and the freedom to work on fascinating projects to push at the boundaries of knowledge, to challenge yourself and to grow and to meet and collaborate with and form friendships with incredible people who love what they do. So who should do a PhD? Now, some people would say that you need passion for the work, but I think this is a bit of an ambiguous phrase. And if you're going to make such a major life decision, it's worth being a bit more specific. So if you're thinking of doing a PhD, I would ask you two questions. First, would you want to do this kind of work even if you didn't get a certificate at the end of it? In other words, are you intrinsically motivated or do you just want the external validation? Second question, when you face a difficult problem or some kind of setback, how do you react? Do you get frustrated and disengage? Or do you get a little bit obsessed with trying to solve it? Will you keep trying, giving it your full effort, even if it takes a hundred attempts until you succeed? Now, personally, I did a PhD for all the wrong reasons. It was a combination of ego, because some of my friends were doing PhDs and I wanted to be equal to them. It was partly not wanting a nine to five job and partly not knowing what else to do. And I suffered as a result, but I was able to reframe it, change my mindset and do quite well in the end. So even if you start for the wrong reasons, it can be worth continuing. And if you want to know what changes I made to save my PhD, check out the video linked up here and in the description below. So if you're thinking about applying for a PhD program, ask yourself honestly, why do you want to do it? It can be immensely rewarding, but you have to know what you're getting into, what you want out of it, and whether a particular PhD program or supervisor is right for you, as not all of them are equal. And if you do find the right program and supervisor for you, you need to know how to navigate the difficulties and get the most out of it. So over the next few months, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on how to do this, how to cope with the challenges of PhD life, how to avoid the common traps and how to build key skills, and ultimately how to get the most out of your PhD and maybe even enjoy the process. So if you'd like to learn more, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and also head over to my website at phd.academy and sign up for the email list so I can let you know about new videos 
live events and all those kind of things. And if there's anything you'd like me to cover, if you have any questions about this or any other aspects of PhD study, leave a comment below.